Spider's back. It's 610 Halifax time. I think August 26th, I believe. Uh, time's flying. The summer's almost over. It's pouring rain here. But I don't want to get into any of that. I want to talk CFL football this, you know, solely this time. And get right down to the nitty gritty. Spider, spider, here comes spider, CFL's red zone rule in the red zone. Not the dead zone. <laughs> anyway, I don't think it rings your ears like it does right here, but it's this cool brass bell. Brass bell, it's hard to say. Anyway, let's get into it, the session. Okay, I'm back, and I want to talk about CFL football more this time than I had been previously, and, uh, and you know, I'm sorry about that, because, uh, you know, like, I've been talking about a lot of other things recently, and I want to get right into the nitty-gritty of CFL football, you know? CFL three-down football. Let's talk about it. You know, where are we going to put this little guy? <laughs> he got caught in the... Yeah, I think with the schooner beer. Let's get into it anyway. We'll talk about this guy later. Okay, touchdown Atlantic, or what's going on in, in the CFL? Randy Brosey met with Mayor Savage a week ago. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about yeah, you know, tenth CFL franchise in Halifax, possibly, or Quebec City, uh, and. I got my views on what I think is going to happen in Halifax, and I can give you some insight in that later on the session, which will be very interesting. Okay, and uh, and because I have what I believe I think is going to happen, because there's been some things said by CPL Derek Martin recently that leads me to believe there's something going on, and there's a couple possible scenarios. But the key is an owner. If there's an owner in place. And we'll talk about what that will do if there is a, a serious owner for CFO franchise in Halifax and how that can relate to, uh, uh, you know, like a, a decent, sizable stadium. But the problem with that is Mayor Savage and his radical leftist uh, 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 liberal councillors. Uh, that's the problem. And so with their Mickey Mouse little CPL, little pop-up, little pre fabricated uh, modular stadium they want to build 10,000 permanent seats, which is a joke. So it's nice and in intimate for Derek Mark and the CPL team that may not even be around in three years, and I'll get all in all this at the end. But first of all, what I want to do, and, and what I believe it's going to happen with the CFL in, in Halifax, okay? And uh, probably in the near future, okay? Probably before the Grey Cup. We're at the Grey Cup. You'll hear something, I think, if it's going to take place or not. And I'll give you all the particulars and uh, insights and different scenarios here that I believe what could happen and, and probably will happen. And not 100% guaranteed, but I, I, I have a pretty good inkling. I have, some, I, have some, uh, I have some ways of finding out things. I'll tell you a little later, okay? So my son, I was watching the Troll Argonauts game last night and uh, with, the, with the Calgary Stampeders that can't seem to win a game, close games, they'll lose another one. They've only won three games and lost eight. Can you imagine? Imagine. Played 11 games. Right? 11 games. <laughs> only got seven games left. I mean, the, <laughs> the Elks finally won a game. The Elks. Thanks a lot, Randy Rose, if you're taking away and, and, you know, and with Trudeau and, you, you know, campaigning for him in his last election to try to get votes, taking away Edmund Eskimo's name that, that practically destroyed the Ed, Edmund Eskimo franchise for the Edmonton Elks, and they had to bring the EE back. It should be at center field, too, by the way. Bring the Edmund Eskimo's names, name back, you know. Stop these liberal politics, you know. Like, I'm starting to believe that C, C, the CFL is being liberal run, and I'm going to get into that later, too. I, I hope I'm wrong on this. But anyway, I was watching the game, I was texting back and forth, Friday night football game last night in, in BMO. They had a good crowd, the exhibition was on, they had a pretty good crowd there. I'd say over 20,000, I, I think so, you know. Uh, and the Stampeders played pretty good, but they lose because that link guy keeps getting punt returns like he did here at Touchdown Atlantic at St. Mary's. But, but something was said during the game by Dwayne Ford in relation to the Canadian racer that we have to call the CFL out on. And if they want to be a real player, 
and be a real professional three down football league, they got to be able to play the best players. And with the Canadian ratio the way it is, which got worse by the way, in the last collective bargaining agreement with the Canadian Players Association that are basically running the CFL, it got worse. It's now eight starters, not seven, and half the roster have to, has to be Canadian, which is insane. Canadian roster ratio, which is insane. And this is why the Canadian ratio is killing the CFL. And until it's changed, and it's got to be dramatically changed, the CFL, they're, they're never going to grow their leg. And, 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 and until they get rid of the one-year one contracts and bring my CFL Red Zone Bowl, and that's, if they do all three, then, then they have a real product to sell. Anyway, let's, let's talk about what was said by Dwayne Ford. And I, I text my son. Here's what I text my son. Okay? I text my son. I said, uh... Um, I said this. Um, I said they said on on TSN panel in the Friday night football game in, in Bemo Field last night, the Argonauts and the Stampeders. I said they said that the guaranteed Canadian old lineman, like old old lineman, okay, Bell, Bell. Okay, here we got a criminal call. Imagine that criminal. Like, can you just let me alone, you bunch of criminals? You know, really and truly. One a day, two a day, you know it's unbelievable. I said what, what Dwayne Ford said that uh, the, the Canadian guaranteed old lineman basically he didn't say that many that words, but basically that's what it is. Bell for for the uh, Calgary Stampeders is on a six-game injuries list, injury injuries injury injury list. My gosh, come on, Spider, get it together here. Come on. It's been a while, okay, but I, I wanted to get back earlier than last time, right? I hope my camera doesn't go down here, because that's all that has to happen. Everything's going wrong here. Lay off, criminals. How, I, I'm sure you get the same. It's every day bombarded with criminals, right? No wonder in the corrupt world we're living in. But this Canadian alignment bell, okay? Six-game injury list. Oh, keep quiet. Shut up, will you? It's a cr criminals. And, and that the Stamps had to replace him with an American player because the Canadian player, so an American alignment because the Canadian player replacement, Canadian roster ratio player, wasn't good enough. Which they said, took the Stamps, they didn't say that, but I'm saying that. That's exactly why. And I, and which, okay, they said, took the Stamps, second best receiver, which is Dukes, by the way, in, in, in yards gain, gain off the starting lineup and put them on the practic practice roster. Can you imagine? Can you believe this? This is ludicrous. And the CFL and Randy Ambrosi brags about the CFL that have a world-class league and you know it's a world-class, world class, the best players in the world. How is that possible? This is what he brags about all the time. How is that possible? You can't even start and play your best players in the CFL because of the guaranteed handcuffing, dictating, controlling Canadian starter ratio and half of the, imagine, half of, of the team, huge Canadian roster ratio. It's not even obtainable, right? It's, it's not. It's not even realistic. And, and then, you know, don't blame it on Tucker, the guaranteed Canadian starter receiver that dropped the ball in the end zone mirror. Put, put a rate on the money in, in his hands and he, because he, he's supposed to replace Dukes, okay, because of the Canadian ratio. Uh, they have to play eight Canadian starters, okay, so they can't play their best, best second best receiver, Dukes, that probably could have easily caught that. He's now on the practice roster because of Canadian ratio. Like, and I'm saying I'm going to cover this and expose this on my next video on YouTube, I tell my son. Can you imagine, can you imagine this? Sorry about that. Uh, I mean, I get distracted with these criminals calling me, right? On my cell phone, and it's unbelievable. Every day, like, I'm telling you something. I don't, I don't want to talk about CFL football right now, though. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to let the video go anyway, but because uh, I, I don't do remakes, I do all live takes, okay? So listen. I mean, the CFL's got to be called out because a lot of people that are watching CFL football, and especially the younger generation fans, and certainly NFL only fans, probably know, they, they probably know, but a knowledgeable CFL fans should know. But some of them 
CFL fans don't even know about the Canadian, how bad the Canadian ratio is. But look, I'm as Canadian as it gets, okay? I, I had a Blackberry. I, I love my playbooks. I had, you know, three of them for God's sakes. I, I, three Blackberries, two or three Blackberries, you know? And, and I love the product. And I'm very Canadian. I don't even watch the NFL. I don't watch the CFL. So I'm not against Canadian players playing the CFL. But here's the problem. Is almost 30 down the NFL now. There is 30 in the NFL. And they're starting. And they're signing every year in the NFL. And the best talent Canadian football player players, the, the most talented players, don't even show up at the combine. They're not, don't even, like they don't even draft them because not, they don't care about the CFL. They want to go to the NFL. You know, where the money is, okay? So why is there Canadian why is there a Canadian draft? There needs to be a Canadian open draft, okay? Draft the best players, doesn't matter where they come from, and get rid of the Canadian ratio. The Canadian ratio has to go. Now they're supposed to have another meeting on these naturalized what they call uh, American nationalized Canadian or some ridiculous thing. If you're in the league three years with one team or five of the other, right? But you got to be in three years, so you got to stretch the fourth year. It's just unbelievable. And then they come up with this thing about twenty. They only play twenty, twenty-three percent of the snaps, or something, or twenty-three snaps. Not there was a forty-nine percent percentage that they could play. Now it's twenty-three snaps. The game. Can you imagine? It got worse. Like it's just, it's just unbelievable. It's got to go. So they're going to revisit that and make it from two to three. But you know what? They got to revisit the Canadian ratio, and it's got to go. You, it's got to go. The Canadian starter ratio has to go. Listen, in Pee Wee, Pee Wee hockey, and baseball, Pee Wee, and Batham, minor league baseball, competitive minor league baseball, competitive minor league hockey. They they played the best players. If you play competitive hockey in minor league hockey, and and seriously, my son did it. My son played. And he played the highest level, AAA, every year, and and even in the in the in the in the C and the B, right, and the Double A, not just the AAA, but the best competitive, the best players play because it was competitive hockey, in when they were kids in minor hockey and baseball hockey, you know, like in baseball and and St. Mary's Huskies, the AUS and the U Sports. It's competitive. They're, they're, they're not handcuffed and dictated that they get. St. Mary's Huskies got to have half their roster from, from, from the Merritt or from, from Nova Scotia, or they have to play eight Nova Scotians on their team. Why? Because it'd be no good. That's what the CFL. That's what You see how the, all the horrible protection. You see the game on, on Thursday night in Winnipeg. Great crowd, Winnipeg. You're dedicated fans. Good for you. But you see, like, over 30,000. They clobbered them with 30. 47 to 17 by 30 points. Winnipeg Blue Bombers clobbered the Montreal Alouettes. You know why? Because the O-line is brutal. The Canadian starting guaranteed O-linemen are brutal. And they're brutal on all CFL teams. There may be one or two, maybe. But if there's injuries, they're not going to be able to be protected. And, and Stan Peters, same, same thing. Their O-line's no good. Montreal Alouettes, their O-line, Ottawa Red Blacks, their O-line's no good. Edmund Eskimos, their O-line's no good. There's very few teams in the CFL that's got a decent O-line because of the Canadian starter ratio where they put where they put them, the guaranteed guaranteed O-linemen. Starting Canadian O-linemen that are guaranteed. They're automatically given that starting spot. And by the way, there's not, not near enough gut backups if the injuries go down, like with these Canadian guaranteed O-linemen. And, and there's not near enough uh, starters, they're guaranteed. They're automatically given the spot, starting spot. These guaranteed you know, linemen that are way overpaid, over two hundred thousand. Some get two fifty. It's ridiculous. It's destroying the CFL. The CFL is being destroyed by the Canadian ratio. Let me tell you, I'm not kidding you. It's terrible what's going on. And there's an example. But but that's every game. It's the same thing. Even Dave Dickinson of the Calgary San Peter said on the interview on 7-7 radio in Calgary that they're struggling with Canadian ratio. It's even worse this year. But it was when it was bad with seven Canadian stars. Now it's worse with eight. 
and they were supposed to reduce this five, and that's what they come up with. They added another one to eight guaranteed Canadian starting, and this bullshit about uh, uh, American uh, nationalized, or Canadian, American nationalized Canadian, <laughs> I don't know what the hell they call it. It's ridiculous. And these glo the global player that's, that they have to have in the run, it's just unbelievable, man. And Randy Brosey would go on about, oh, how we have the greatest players, the best world athletes, the best in the world playing in the CFL, and, and the best brand of, of football in the world, and said our hash marks, the greatest role. Yeah, the hash mark is an absolute joke. You see all the interceptions, throwing more sideways to, to for, because the narrow hash marks being so much easily, much eat. It's much easier now to pick off the, the, the picket, the re, intercept. You see it all the time. Seriously, they're intercepting. It's a lot easier with the narrow hash marks to intercept when they're throwing it sideways across field. It's a joke. The hash mark, jog, hash mark, hash pipe, uh, smoking hash mark uh, rule is an absolute gimmicky little little minor alteration joke. It's a joke. It's a, it's 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 baloney. It's garbage. It it does nothing but make our CFL three down game worse. My CFL red zone rule will blow it out of the water. We'll blow your hash pipe your hash pipe hash mark rule Randy Brosie out of the water. It's an absolute embarrassment. And the Canadian ratio is an absolute embarrassment. Look, if the top Canadian players want to play in the CFL Make a, make a CFL team. And by the way, the epitome of a Canadian player was John Cornish because he wanted to play in the CFL. He didn't want to even play in the NFL. He didn't. He wanted to play in the CFL. He was very Canadian. He wanted to play for Calgary, actually. He was an outstanding running back. He was Canadian. You know? And, and, and that's the epitome of the Canadian player playing in the CFL should be. He didn't. He, he he didn't need a Canadian ratio to to make to make. He would have made. I would have owned the team. I would have had him on my team. I would draft put him on my my Stan Peters. Damn right I would have. And that's what has to happen. The 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 best Canadian players who actually want to play in the CFL and not the NFL have to make a CFL team. Listen, if you want to have a five player like roster like the MLS soccer teams in Canada like Toronto FC have three guaranteed roster spots roster spots for Canadian, but they don't have to, they're not guaranteed they have to start them. So you have five on each CFL team, and if they're not good, you put them in like a practice roster, and you develop them into a starter if they're good enough. That's it. And the rest of them have to make, if the Canadian player is, is good enough, he wants to put really play in the CFL, not the NFL, and he's, he, has to, he has to earn a spot like the American players have to do in the CFL, and he has to he can't be given a, a Canadian starter ratio spot because of his passport and the Canadian ratio. He can't be given a guaranteed Canadian roster ratio spot because of his passport and the Canadian ratio. He has to make a CFL st starting. He has to make a CFL roster spot and, and a starting sp spot. Has to, st has to prove that he can start and prove he can make the team first, or he's just not on the team. And you can have Yal uh, uh, five roster spots, maximum for development Canadian players that aren't quite good enough? Yes, that's the way to do it. But the best players have to be allowed to be recruited by the GMs and the coaches and the owners. What are you doing? Why are you allowing the Canadian players and the Canadian Players Association to screw you over? You want to reduce to five, you actually want the Canadian ratio gone, which you shouldn't. You should have locked them out. The hell with TSN. The hell with them. They, they, you know what they did this? Friday Night Football, they don't show it on seven, their, 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 their main network. Same as the night before. They're not even showing the main event, showing some crappy golf. You know, not even top-notch golf. Not the best golf, not the major tours. What is going on? You're screwing the CFL. You don't even have a CFL week like program. You don't promote the CFL. You don't talk about it on TSN or radio. You don't do anything. On TSN, you show the games and collect your sponsor money. You get, like you're awful. You're awful. And and yeah, and then you bully the CFL around. And Randy and Brosie, you're the blame too. And the, the owners, you're the blame. Randy Brosie's in bed with the Canadian Players Association, Players Association, the Commission of the CFL. 
you know, can you believe how political that is? Because he belonged to them. And he tried, he actually took the CFL to court when they wanted to get rid of the Canadian ratio. How do you make him commissioner? I'm sorry, Mr. Ambrosi. I'm sorry. I'll give you credit where credit's due, but not where it's not. But I'm going to get the next session to talk about a little more about the Canadian ratio as well. Okay, but now we're going to talk about Touchdown Atlantic and, and, and what's going on in Halifax because I, I, I got on a rant on this, but I really wanted to. Uh, well, Touchdown Atlantic is over in St. Mary's, and they still have the stands up, by the way, uh, and, and the press boxes and everything there. I wanted to tell you that. And Mayor Savage met with, uh, with uh, Randy Ambrosi in, in Toronto for lunch a week ago or so. Now, Randy, what's, what's happening with Mayor Savage? Because he did nothing for Touchdown Atlantic. They did nothing but free buses in the end, but they did nothing. They gave them nothing. And they're in bed with Derek Martin. And Derek Martin recently, I was going to say early, he said a few, not about three or four weeks ago, he said, oh yeah, in two months you're going to hear big plans for his 10,000, you know, pop-up, prefab, modular, CF, C, C, CPL uh, soccer stadium. When Edmonton went down last year, Winnipeg Blue Bombers are on a CPL team, says they're, they're losing so much money, they'll probably fold next year, and New York is up for sale. So they're in bed with him because it's all politics and the Halifax Wanderers. Uh, Derek Martin's a liberal, just like Mayor Savage, he's you know radical leftist. So anyway, so they want their little Mickey Mouse, let them have it. Randy Ambrosi, don't get sucked in on this, okay? Because Mayor Savage just wants to try to get more revenue, and he's going to try to convince Derek Martin, okay, uh, that, hey, we can do CFL and so forth, and, and he's going to say to Randy Ambrosi, uh, you know, like he said on the radio, they only get 15000 anyway, 10 15, to a game, what a bunch of bullshit. Well, you know, lately they have, and that could be, that could change. And my CFL Red Zone rule, you need to get rid of one-year contracts. It's killing the CFL. Imagine 30, 40 free agents every year in a CFL team. You know, how, how do you sell a jersey? How do you have? How do you build a team? This has to go. My CFL Red Zone rule needs to be implemented. It's it's a natural. It's there every single CFL game that's staring the CFL right in the eye. And I'm going to talk about that next session, and and why it needs to be adopted like uh, big time. So anyway, uh, like Mayor Savage is trying to suck him in. He's, he's, he has no respect for the CFL, just trying to get more revenue for the city in rent. So he doesn't care about the CFL. He doesn't care about the owner. He, he just cares, you know, like he's in, in, in dreamland. What do you mean? Listen, I know you're not going to build a $300 million or $200 million, but build something in between. Not, not, not a little Mickey Mouse, $20 million for a CBL team. Can you, soccer, little little tiny little pop-up little thing, module thing, prefabricated little tiny little 10,000 seat, you know, like modular state. Build, spend a hundred million, okay? Get get Kim Use involved, get get the feds involved, Trudeau owes us, okay? And and build something and and knock down the buildings. If you want to build a wanderer's knock, move. The, the horses should be moved in, the lances should be moved anyway. Lawn mowing should go over to the, uh, uh, the commons, okay? So, but anyway, do it right and build it, turn it, reconfigure it, turn it and build at least a hundred million dollar CFL model stadium with all the amenities and sky boxes, everything you need, permanent washrooms, open concourse, okay, and, and do it right. It doesn't have to be, you know, you can do it for a hundred million and expandable for, for a great first great cup game ever in, in Halifax. Imagine every stage, it would be unbelievable. Expandable to say 24,000 seats, expandable to 31, like they're in Hamilton. It doesn't have to be 140 million, you can do it for 100 million here. You got the land, you should be able to do that. If, if you contract it out, they're desperate for business, someone will come give you a deal, and you'll be able to build it. Use our own steel, use everything that's ours, okay? Build it. We have the land, the land's there, go, go do it, okay? Anyway, so. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the time, and actually at 27 minutes, okay? But, seriously, you know, build it right. St. Mary's doesn't have the footprint there. I mean, if they use the track, but the buildings are there. They'd have to knock out where the commitment room, there's an equipment room, knock it out, and build it up over. There's a, there's a chance they could do something there, but the problem is the exchange with built off the cafeteria building, that screwed everything, because they could have had a double-decker over there. That's why one from 35 yards down was only uh, 
30 rows and it was 40 rows on the other side. But I mean, if they wouldn't have built that exchange, they could build a double decker. They could went up 50 rows total. Uh, open concourse, permanent washrooms and concessions, everything. Sky boxes on the top. And, and, and then did a tier over and, uh, on, you know, on the, using the truck on the other side of the building, up over the buildings. It could be done. Wanderers grounds, I mean, unless the buildings go where the, where the horses are, the land, the land, 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 landers, uh, Lancers, Lancers, sorry, that's the name of them. And the lawn bowling and the end where the kitchen party stands are for the CPL, Halifax Wanderers team, lets that removed and they reconfigure it. You, you couldn't build something sizable for a CFL team. But St. Mary's, I don't know, maybe maybe Kim Houston, where he went to St. Mary's, maybe he can get involved, maybe something can happen there. Maybe they can do something, I don't know. But why even spend any money if it's not expandable to host a great cup game? Why you spend the money? Because no owner's going to want it. So there's a real, there's a real dilemma here because, because they should really look for a, a neutral site. Nova Scotia, Premier Houston, maybe there's land in the city where you can build something decent for $100 million, expandable for a Grey Cup game, temporary expandable for a Grey Cup game. That's what has to be done. Forget about the Halifax wine. Mayor Savage is a con man. Forget about St. Mary's. There's not enough room there. It's just you can't cut it. And because a CFL owner needs to be viable, and, he, and you know you need the proper facility, you need the capacity, you need all the amenities, and it needs to be expandable temporarily for a Grey Cup game in Halifax. It would be huge for the city, our capital city, and huge, huge for our province of Nova Scotia. So, listen, I got on a rant. I haven't been back for a while because I'm really, I'm really rusty, and I've been going through a lot lately. There's a lot going on, and. Go through a lot of pressure cookers in my life and so forth. So anyway, I'm sorry, but I'm back and I'll be back tomorrow again. But look, with my son, what he gave me, right? I wish he's. Oh, by the way, he's got to wear it. I want to tell him to go to Labor Day, regardless. He's not very happy because Stan Peters only won three games. But son, go to Labor Day, please. Go to Labor Day concert. And I mean Labor Day, <laughs> CFL game between the Elks and Stan Peters, and wear. Wear this. He's got a medium that fits him well. He's he's all muscle, solid. Wear it with your Spider C4 Red Zone Roll hat. And take a picture. Okay? Give it to your dad.